What up, family? This is Pastor Jay with Raindrop number four. Listen, I want to continue what I started on yesterday. We talked about the widow with the oil. Her sons were about to be sold into slavery because she was in debt. And she goes to the man of God. He gives her a strategy. She follows that strategy. And she goes from being in debt to owning her own oil company. So I just want to kind of break down some things. It wasn't until the creditors threatened to take her sons that she really took action. And so my question to you is, what is your why? What is it that you desire in your life that you're not experiencing right now? For her, it was her sons. The threat of losing her sons, the threat of them being sold into slavery pushed her beyond her fear, pushed her beyond her comfort zone, pushed her beyond the thing that was holding her in place. And so my question to you, what is that thing that is pushing you for more? What is that thing that you desire? What can you see in your mind's eye, in your spirit that you say, I know there's better for me beyond this. There are things that keep us here. We're sick and tired, but we still stay in our comfort zone. But what is that thing that you desire? Are you desiring to leave a legacy for your family? Or do you need more resources? Are you wanting to travel? Are you, what is your why? Are you building something for your family? Are you going to be the first millionaire in your family? Are you going to be the first one that breaks through that glass ceiling? What is your why? I want you to think about that. What is your motive? If you don't push, what will that mean long term? Okay, and so you may be comfortable, but what will that mean for the generations following you? What will that mean for your children or your unborn children? What will that mean if you don't take the risk? How is that going to affect the next generation? And so number one, she found her why. She wanted to make sure that her kids were in place, that her family was intact. And so she pushed to get out of her comfort zone and to make a decision to get help and to move and get a strategy. Secondly, once she goes to the man of God, she determines that whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do it. And so she begins to, she asks the question, but then she embraces the answer and she moves on the instruction. Some of you, you have mentors, you have people that are in your corner, but the question is, are you willing to do the thing that it takes to move from where you are to the place of destiny? Are you willing to uh, get out of your comfort zone? Are you willing to take another class? Are you willing to write the vision and make it plain? Are you willing to connect with people that don't look like you or sound like you? Are you willing to get into other rooms? What is it that you need to do in order to make these moves? And so for her, she had to assess, number one, what does she have? I told you yesterday that what you have is enough. Now that you have what you need, now you need something to contain it. You need a strategy of how to use what you have. What you have is enough, but now you have to have wisdom and strategy on how to use it, how to use it to your advantage. And so she was willing to listen to someone that had more expertise, that had greater vision, greater insight, and she was obedient to the instruction. I want to tell you, be obedient to the instruction. Whether God is telling you to do something, whether your mentor or your coach or whomever is giving you sound advice to do it, don't drag your feet. There's no sense of asking God or asking people that you trust uh, what's next and then sitting down on the instruction. And so she moves on it. She makes good on it. She goes, she borrows the vessel. She gets as many as she can. And then the thing that she has begins to work. It begins to flow. It begins to move on her behalf. All right. And so, again, I want you as you begin to pursue, be consistent. Do the thing that you need to do. See it all the way through. The Bible says she goes in with her sons. She closes the door. Be careful that you don't release your vision or release. Uh, tell everybody what you're doing while you're working on it. Sometimes you've got to work on it because you're not sure. Get some traction. Start working with it. Start working on it. And as it begins to build, listen, keep it close to the chest. Some of us, we've lost our confidence because we shared the vision, the dream, the idea, looking for validation 
uh, from folks that have no idea of what you're doing. Sometimes you're doing things that you don't know exactly how it's going to work out. And so begin to move on it, get some traction, keep it quiet for a minute, but work on it. Be consistent. All right. And so she's consistent. She fills up the vessels. And then she says, now what? Then she goes out and she begins to sell the product to her community. She sells the product. She does what she needs to do to package it in a way that she can sell it and exchange product or service for money. And then after she gains the money, after she sells it, she follows the instructions. She prioritizes her spending. She pays off the creditors first, and then her and her sons live off the rest. I'm telling you, you've got to assess, number one, what is your why? You've got to hear God and obey. You've got to hear your coach. You've got to hear the strategy and obey. You've got to be willing to do the thing that you've never done before. Get out of your comfort zone. Be consistent. Make sure that you're not releasing it before time. And then as you work on it, package it in a way that it can be exchanged. Package it in a way that it can move and get to the people it needs to get to and bless the people it needs to bless. And ultimately, it will come back and bless you. All right. So I want to encourage you. Let's go. What is your why? Put it in the comments. What is your why? What are you believing God for? Let me give you one more tip that the Lord gave me a long time ago. Many of us are frustrated or irritated with our current situation. The Lord said this to me. He says, pay attention to your frustration because on the other side of it is answers. And so the thing that's frustrating you, don't just sit frustrated, but pay attention to why. Why are you frustrated about this? What are you seeing that you think everyone else sees but they're not doing anything about? What are you seeing that you're like, somebody ought to do something about this. And maybe you are the one that God has given the strategy and the answer to do something about it. All right. Don't just sit frustrated. Find out why you're frustrated. And I promise you there'll be an answer on the other side that will bless others and ultimately bless you. All right. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.